Ladies and gentlemen, the railroad hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents a musical impression of Blackmore's famous romance, Lorna Doon, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great story with music is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the multitude of other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are bound for the Moors of England a century ago as we bring you Lorna Doon, with Dorothy Warnshold as the lovely Lorna, And I shall be John Ridd, who tells a story. First, you've got to understand about Glendoon. It's a valley in Devon, the fairest county of all England. Soon after you've seen it, you're likely to find a musket ball between your eyes... But the danger there doesn't make Glendoon the less beautiful to see. Do you can Glendoon with its racing rills And the hills so high that they brush the sky? Do you can yon glade with the leaves like lace Where a lass hides her face in the morning? When the sun sinks low, do you can Glendoon when the air is still in the afternoon Do you can the sigh in the sunset sky As the glades go to sleep till it's morning When the shades are black on the hills of doom The glades are guarded by a misty the warning track of a falling star Did you bide where you are till it's morning? Do you can Glendoon by the rising sun And you run to look at the sights to see But it's not so fair There's fear on the wind in the morning. For there's fear on the wind in the morning. There was fear on the wind one morning in my twelfth year when I was suddenly called home from school. Oh, how I looked forward to seeing my father. But when I arrived home, I was greeted only by my mother's tears. Your father is dead, John. Killed by those savages. Killed by the dunes. A 12-year-old boy may have more courage than many a man twice his age. I headed for the valley that no one of our village had ever visited, Glen Dune. I knew only one entrance, behind the waterfall of Bagworthy Stream, through the blackness of Bagworthy Wood. The dunes had killed my father. And I was determined to avenge him. Painfully, with a boy's daring, I climbed the rocky steps of the waterfall. Reed! John Reed! I looked back and saw my father's oldest friend. He had followed me into the woods, calling after me. Come back, John Reed. How long do you think you'll live in the Valley of the Dunes? They'll kill you as they kill your father. What'll be the good of that? 
come home, John Reed. Bide your time. You'll have your vengeance, boy. Never fear. <laughs> I turned back, but my hatred for the dunes burned bright through the years. From my 12th to my 20th, I finished schooling and, more important, learned the gentle art of violence as a red coat in the service of the crown. Some talk of Alexander and some of Hercules, of Hector and Lysander and such great names as these. But of all the world's brave heroes, we've never seen the peers. With a toll, roll, 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 roll to the British Grenadiers. When the siege is over, we to the town repair. The townsmen cry, hurrah, boys, here comes a grenadier. May they and their commanders live happy all the years. With a toll, roll, 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 to the British grenadier. Mother. Let me look at you. You're the image of your father. There's a score to be settled there, Mother. Now that I'm out of the service. I won't hear of it. Can the dunes take my father's life and pay no price for it? They've grown more evil, John. Robbing and burning across the countryside. No law can touch them. Not the law of God, no man. When I was a boy, Mother, I turned back from Glen Dune. Now I am a man. And I cannot turn back. The great rocky slide of Bagworthy Falls was still dark and difficult to climb. Though the water which had once touched my knees was now satisfied with my ankles. When I reached the top, I looked across the most beautiful and peaceful landscape I have ever seen. Thank the Lord for that. Then what are you doing here? They'll kill you. As they did my father, perhaps. Is that why you've come? To avenge your father? A hundred moons have passed since my father died. But I've sworn one of the dunes will die before another moon is new. Please, leave our valley. Our valley? Are you a dune? No one lives here but members of our clan. Oh, now go away, please, before they kill you. If you're a doom, what do you care for my life? Oh, I'm so weary of the killing and the thieving and the fear. Why should you be afraid? Because I am a doom and there is no one to teach me what is right. A mother or father? I have no remembrance of mother or father. Although they say my father was the eldest son of Sir Enzo Doon, who rules this tribe of robbers... I have heard of Sir Enzo Doom. He must be an old man. A very old man. And when he dies, they say I shall be their queen. Queen Lorna, ruler of this valley of violence. Let me take you away, Lorna Doom. Oh, shh. Oh, they're coming. Oh, leave quickly. No. Oh, if you care for me at all, go. I would die to see your blood on the meadows of Glen Moon. <laughs> Twenty times we met, by starlight, for it was safer then, in the cool, watery silence behind Bagworthy Falls. And there I learned to love the daughter of my father's enemies.
now. Come with me, John Ridd. Where are we going? To see my grandfather. He is dying and he, he wishes to speak to you. I have his promise that no one will harm him. Lorna led me past a dozen silent men, standing as motionless as great trees, and into a low hut. The room was cold and dark, with only two sputtering candles. And then I saw him, the oldest man I have ever seen. He sat upright in a chair, a loose red cloak thrown over him. Death was in his face, and only in his great eyes could I see his soul burning. So, you are the great John Ridd. John Ridd is my name, sir. I am told that you are in love with my granddaughter. You set your eyes above your station. Sir, the Rids of Ore have been honest men twice as long as the Dunes have been rogues. Oh, John. We have only taken what has been taken from us. Such is my father's life. <laughs> you are a fool. I do not have the strength to speak. Words are knives in my mouth. Only promise me, Lorna, you will not see this young man again. She will not promise. We're in love, sir. Do you force me to tell you? Tell me what, Grandfather? It was your father who killed John Ridd's father, Lorna. (gasps) And as he fell, his father killed yours. Do you wish the curse of a double murder always over your heads? Do you wish? Then, as in a terrible dream, we knew Sir Ensor Doom was dead. And the head of this tribe of robbers was now my beloved. I fled from Glendoon, my heart in a turmoil. Oh, did ever two people love under such a shadow? Just a moment, we'll continue with Act Two of Lorna Doom. Over the years, America's ability to defend herself and the principles for which she stands has come to depend more and more on new and fantastic weapons and machinery. During World War II, for example, over 90% of all military freight traffic in this country moved by rail, and over 97% of all organized troop movements traveled by train. Including both military and civilian traffic, the railroads during the war years handled more than two-thirds of all freight moving between our cities. And today, as we use and enjoy our highways and skyways and waterways, it's well to keep in mind that in peace as in war, our standard of living, as well as our military defense, rests firmly on the railroad's unique threefold abilities. 
First, their vast and flexible hauling capacity. Second, their extraordinary efficiency and economy in the use of men and fuel. Third, their ability to haul anything in any quantity, anywhere, in any season of the year, regardless of weather, over their highly organized system of steel rails, rails that reach into every corner of the country. And because there is no form of transportation in existence or in sight that can match the railroads in all these respects, the railroads will continue to remain the basic transportation arm of this great nation. Now here is Act Two of Lawrence and Lee's musical impression of Lorna Doone, starring Gordon McRae as John Ridd and Dorothy Warrenshold as Lorna. <laughs> I did my best to forget Lorna Doom. Tried to force her out of my thoughts, to lose myself in the gaiety of the village fair. The sun is a shining to welcome the day. I come to the fair. The folk are all singing so merry and gay. I come to the fair. All the stalls on the green are as fine as can be. With trinkets and tokens so pretty to see. So it's come then, maidens and men, to the fair in the tide of the morning. So deck yourselves out in your finest array. I hope come to the fair, maidens and men, maidens and men, come to the fair in the morning. I But it was no use. I turned my back on the fair and walked back to my mother's cottage. You are sad, my son. Go to her. Mother, you know about Lorna. Mothers are not half so unaware of the things that go on in their children's hearts as their children sometimes think. But what can I do, Mother? Where can I take her? This is your home. Bring her here. But, Mother, how can I tell you? It was her father who killed my father. Old Enzo Doon told us before he died. John, our family Bible says, love thine enemies. The icy grip of winter was on the moors. I dug my way through snow drifts, scaled the frozen heights of Bagworthy Falls, hacking stairs from the solid stream of ice. And then I stood again, a speck against the white emptiness of Glen Doom. Lorna! Lorna! Only the cold answered. I searched the empty streets like a man in a dream, walking through a city of the dead. Lorna! Lorna! I was the hope and the 
What have they done to you? They've run off to the caves in the hills and left me here to starve. What oh, are savages? But why have they deserted you? Because I would not marry Carver Doon. I said I would rather give up food than marry him. Oh, Lorna. Lorna. Oh, I wish to die, John, for I thought you had forgotten about me. I have come to take you home. Home? To the warmth of our fireplace. To the welcome of our hearth. I gathered her in my arms and started for the icy stairs of Bagworthy Falls. Suddenly, a, a shadow fell across my path in the snow. Step where you are, John Ridd. Oh, it's Carver Dune. You think to steal our princess away from us? Our princess and my intended bride. <laughs> You'll learn respect for the dunes of Bagway. And you for the Rids of Ore. Bring back Lorna. Or you die, John Ridd. No, I cannot risk your life, John. I'll go back to Glen Dune. No. Well, farmer. I know you have a gun, Carver Dune. And I am unarmed. But it is your life or mine as the will of God will have it. But the two of us will not live upon this earth another hour together. <laughs> His bullet hit my shoulder. I sprang forward, not caring whether I lived or died. Only knowing that this man threatened to take away everything in the world that I loved. My strength was like iron. And in two minutes, I had him helpless on the ground. <laughs> you kill, kill me. Don't. She does not love you. Why do you torture her? She is our princess. From the day we kidnapped her as a child. Kidnapped? Then she is not a doom. What difference does it make? Tell me she is not really a doom by blood. Tell me! She is not really a... And the old man doom. lied. Her father did not kill mine. With this news, I let you go, Carver Doom. You're a fool, John Red. It was I who killed your father. <laughs> He was looking back, taunting me, and did not see the edge of the cliff. He lost footing and plunged headlong down Bagworthy Falls. You are safe now, my Lorna, my own. Will you stay with me always? No fears between us? Oh, I will stay with you all the days of my life, John. the hills and down the pleasant Lovely Dorothy Warren Show will be back in just one moment. And meanwhile, our good thanks to Janet Scott, Herb Butterfield, Larry Thor, Marvin Miller, of course, and to our entire company. Lorna Dune, based on the Blackmore novel, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this same time by the American Railroads. 
Marvin? Last year marked the 31st consecutive year in which railroads of the United States and Canada moved a heavy volume of commercial explosives without a single death or injury due to rail transportation. The railroads moved without fatality in 1952 great quantities of fireworks and other explosives, as well as hundreds of other things classified simply dangerous. Such a record of safe transportation underscores one of the most important roles of our railroads. For in moving not only these dangerous materials, but also the nation's heavy freight over their own highways of steel, the railroads ensure greater safety for all of us as motorists whenever we travel on the public highways. Thank you, Marvin. What's our destination next week on the show train, Gordon? Well, Dorothy, everyone seemed to like our musical visits with the Brownings and Robert Louis Stevenson. So next Monday night, we'll pay a call on one of America's greatest poets with melodies like this one. Oh, did write those words, Gordon? Well, a fellow named Longfellow, Dorothy, who also dashed off the children's hour, the Vangelin, and, and a whole satchel full of poems you love and remember. Well, it sounds like an exciting visit. Well, it is, and we call it night music. Will you uh, be on hand, Dorothy? I wouldn't miss it. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Dorothy. You are wonderful as usual. All aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next Monday night in the world premiere of night music... On behalf of the other members of the cast and the American Railroads, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying good night. Gordon McRae can soon be seen in Three Sailors and a Girl in Technicolor. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Tonight, the voice of Firestone features Lois Hunt on NBC.